Greetings, and welcome to episode 62. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the Kundalini energy, or the coiled serpent. I've been putting this off for a while, but I figured I'd get into the more esoteric of the path, and not just being more mindful. Okay, so if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, the Kundalini energy, or translated, it's actually just Kundalini, and the word Kundalini means coiled serpent. It's called this because the energy that travels up your spine is the kundalini energy and it activates pretty much your reptilian brain for all intents and purposes <coughs> every human well debatably every human <laughs> has a three-phase brain it is mammalian reptilian and neocortex, neocortex. The neocortex is the thin membrane that covers the outside of the brain. And they think it's just memory storage, but I, I think it's more than that. But we'll get into that another time. I want to focus on the reptilian brain. Because this energy that we channel, that's what it activates. And this energy that you're channeling is your one of your most vital energies your create your creative energy coming from the base chakra all the way up the spine into the head and into the pineal gland now these creative forces activate your <coughs> excuse me your reptil <laughs> your reptilian brain And I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to go by what they say in the books. I'm not going to go by things I've heard. I'm going to go by what it's done for me. Next to nothing. <laughs> it empowers me. You can feel the energy. It enhances. It's like putting on binoculars for your regular eyes to your third eye. I've never used it beyond that. I've never tried to manipulate anything. I just try to keep these mechanisms up and running and meditate and make sure they're working properly. And to be perfectly honest, with all of the injuries I've sustained over the years, the flow of the energy isn't blocked completely, but it is constricted. And I don't have what what is known as Kundalini crisis, which is when the energy rises incorrectly or is blocked it can actually cause you physical pain and I don't get physical pain so to speak but I can feel the energy shooting off in arcs in places because that's where my injuries are so I don't know if I need to go to a chiropractor or what have you but the energy doesn't rise properly and it's not that you're, there's almost no way to do it wrong. You can do it too quickly. This is a process. I mean, if the first time you've ever done it, just slowly, ever so slowly. But after you get the hang of it, don't just flip it on like a regular light. Flip it on like uh, a fluorescent light. Or what do you call them? Yeah, the fluorescent lights like you have at the school or something. You turn it on and it takes a minute and then it comes on. Don't just poof on, just you know, let it rise as you breathe. Every time you breathe in, have it rise a little bit more. This energy should be coming from your creative center and I don't mean creativity, I can draw, I mean your procreative center those vital energies, your creative energies. 
and rise them all the way up to the pineal gland. And yes, there is there's biblical reference to this, several biblical references to this. Most of them have to do with Moses. Ah, uh, what else is there? There's references to it all over the place. Matter of fact, Christianity is the only religion that disguises it. Well, I can't say the only religion. I can't speak to Islam on the subject because I've never dealt with their eso esoteric knowledge. And I want to get into that, but researching such things on the internet in this day and age puts red flags up everywhere. And I've probably got quite enough red flags going on in my life, <laughs> considering <clears throat> my childhood past and all that, which I'll get into at a later date. I'll do a more in-depth autobiographical video <clears throat> than my uh, intro video that I made a long time ago. Wow, that video was crappy looking back. A lot of those videos were crappy. But uh, not the point. The point is we're focusing on our energy. Now, I didn't mention this, but it is important. As this energy travels up, it interacts with each of your chakras on the way up. And then the rest of your chakras when it hits the brain. And the, Some people are saying, the rest of your chakras? What do you mean? Well, besides the main seven chakras, there are actually 73 chakras in the body and a corresponding seal and symbol and name for each we'll get into that later but right, right now I just want to focus on kundalini energy the kundalini and the reason why it seems like people are going crazy nowadays is because the kundalini is rising and people don't know what to do with that extra energy they think oh let's just have sex <laughs> and yeah hell yeah let's just have sex but that's not what the energy's for what the energy's for is you gather it channel it through your chakras the picture that they would show you would be wheels and the kundalini energy is serpentining through these wheels which is probably how it works but I just need you to imagine this energy intersecting with your chakras. The energy is going to do what the energy is going to do. You just need to activate the mechanism slowly, carefully. Because I've heard stories of Kundalini crisis. And just with the little spasms I'm getting, I would say be very, very careful with that energy. But as it goes up, you should be able to feel like a warm energy rising all the way up. All the way up to the pineal gland. And then you open your third eye. And then you can see. And so then, what we're doing then is just focusing on that warmth. And it's a good thing I had the pineal gland one before this, because it's very important. This energy should show you what you need to know and what you need to be doing. And once, it's funny, because when it's down here, it's like, woohoo, sex! But when you make it rise, that is the last thing you're thinking about is sex. And remember, having sex depletes this energy and makes this exercise less and less potent. 
That means whatever information you're going to glean. If you're going to meditate using this energy, if you're going to even just act in a normal fashion in your daily life with this energy, if you're having a lot of sex, it's going to deplete that energy. It's like riding around or trying to start your car with an almost dead battery. It'll turn over, but it won't catch. I don't know, I'm not telling you to abstain by any means. <laughs> I'd be a hypocrite if I did. <laughs> what I am telling you is to, if you want this exercise to come to fruition, you're going to have to lay off the sex for a while. A week. You can. Anyone can do a week. And say on the seventh day, try the exercise. Do the exercise every day. Just the exercise of it. And then on the seventh day, really channel that energy. <sighs> really channel that energy up there. See, I, I have no clue what to do with it. Some people will tell you, oh, you can use it and you can be, get rich. But I'm, money is booby-trapped, and that's a whole other video in itself. Money is booby-trapped. I don't do these things. I don't learn these techniques to make myself rich. If that's your thing, I don't judge. That's your thing. I mean, I'm not against money. Money is a fine thing. It's just that that's not what I'm learning this for. I'm not learning this to change the quality of my life in that particular manner. I'm going to try to change my life from a more spiritual point of view, from the inside out not from the pockets out. <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. From the pockets out would be just fine. <laughs> but that's not what I'm learning these techniques for and I refuse to use it for that. But because I I believe that using it for that is part of the problem. And no, I'm not telling you how to do your thing. What I'm saying is that's part of the problem is if we're all using it to get rich, who's using it to make a better planet? Think about that for a minute. I mean, I have my means to get wealthy if I so desired. I'm a musician, I'm an artist, I've got several things I can be doing. I'm in the middle of writing a book, we'll get into that later. Uh, the myriad of things. I mean, if I wanted to, I could monetize this channel. There's several things, and not just things that I could be doing. I could be helping other family members do things for themselves that they would like to get going. But because I'm trying to focus more on the inner world, sorry, the inner worlds, my focus isn't so financial I guess and so when I u learn these techniques I try to make what's in here better so that when I project out what comes out is better because let's face it and we all deal with it on a daily basis what comes out sometimes doesn't make us feel so good about ourselves oh and we all do the oh sit and justify well he was mean to me first but that's you control you, not him. So, do what you will with these techniques. They're there for everyone to learn. We should have been learning this stuff from childhood. Imagine where we would be if we were learning this stuff from childhood. To do away with ego to learn the different energies and their importance. I mean, I could keep going, but what for? You, you Your mind's already going in the list. <laughs> this would be a much better place. Accessing certain parts of the brain using these certain energies can be scary at first. Because you might end up going to a place you were not prepared to go. But I think that it is... What's the word? Imperative. That 
we all learn these things because we're going to need to know them because like I said this energy is just it's permeating everything it's everywhere and you see it people are becoming more aggressive people are becoming more sexually active and it's not by accident the kundalini energy is becoming more and more forceful and nobody's channeling it properly they're channeling it out their genitals <laughs> when they're supposed to be channeling it up their spine and into their brain it's like nitrous you already have a fine engine now you have nitrous to those uh, to people that get that type of analogy for those of you it's lost on you <laughs> <clears throat> it's like having a better power supply to your computer and it mixes with each other energy center in your body so this energy isn't only coming from your base chakra but it seems to me that that is one of your most powerful chakras. You say, oh, but the heart. Then why do people cheat? If the heart chakra was so powerful, people wouldn't cheat because it would be able to override the downstairs. And in my experience, things I've done and things people have done to me, yeah, the downstairs wins most of the time. Not in the past, I'm going to say 15 years. But it took a long time to get to that point where I could say the downstairs doesn't win anymore. <laughs> Bring the energy up out of it. It is that energy. Leave the chakra there. Sit up. And with each cleansing breath, draw more and more energy up and focus on all of your chakras on the way up every time it passes a chakra and see I can feel it the energy in my back when it hits the center of my back there's something going on there Somebody was blocking my back. <sighs> yeah. That feels really good. I hope you're all experiencing what I'm experiencing. Because I'm experiencing this energy coming up. And when it, like, right when it got to about right here, right across my chest, but in the back, it went. Not super painful. Well, I'm not sure super painful. My pain threshold is different than others. And it's doing the arcing thing again. <clears throat> but I think it's just, it's not emotional blockage I'm dealing with. I think that this is physical blockage. Something in my body saying energy is not right in this place. So sending an extra energy there is actually doing me a little bit of harm. This is known as Kundalini crisis. It's not as bad as some of the stories I've heard, but it's bad enough that I'm not getting the full effect breaching the top. It's like taking you're watering your garden and someone's over there crimping the hose. That's what that is. It's the crimp in the hose. There's still energy getting through, but not nearly as much as there would be if I could figure out why there's a crimp in the hose. Smack that little kid. Ah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh. The energy's twisted. That means my back is tight. I probably just need a massage and a chiropractor or both or sit in a hot tub. One of the two or all three. I might go for the hot tub.
that would be awesome. I'm going to do this exercise in the hot tub later. Uh, not later, but tomorrow. <laughs> Oh yeah, <clears throat> that feels really, really good. Other than the back pain thing. <laughs> My thought form, buddy. <laughs> Anyway, oh, breathing. I am in such a, a good place right now. It feels really, really good. Now, like I said, I don't really do anything with the energy. To me, it's a meditation to get more power to hear so I can focus a little bit better so I can have a little bit better understanding but I don't actually use the energy I probably could I wouldn't begin to know what to use it for and I'm not the kind of person to go willy-nilly experimenting and then say oops my bad <laughs> I used to but not anymore I'm not a kid anymore <laughs> It's not as easy to bounce back from mistakes as it used to be. <clears throat> but if you are, and don't forget to keep the energy flowing, I accidentally just blocked it off on accident. Up, in, and then let it do its thing. And they say, oh, and you can do sex and blah, 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 blah. The whole point of this exercise is to use your sexual energy here. If you're having sex, you're using your sexual energy here. Your brains are not down here. Raise the energy out of there to here. <sighs> so when I'm doing videos like this and you see me go silent it's because I'm trying to convey through a camera of all things what it is I'm feeling and uh, giving you a chance to breathe and, and practice what I've just said practice raising that energy up through your chakras or around your chakras however you want to visualize it and up to the pineal gland and then, like I said in yesterday's episode, let that energy just keep going up. Your job is to just funnel it into, focus it into that one spot, and then let it do its thing from there. But up, not, not forward. We have a tendency to when we focus, to focus forward. Try this one thing. Don't focus up, sideways, down. Focus into the pineal gland, because that's where the energy is going to go. Where attention goes, energy flows. So put your attention on the pineal gland. That's where that energy is going to go. And then let it do its thing from there. Slowly. If you're racing to do this, you're going to experience Kundalini crisis. And it's going to hurt. Because when I just did that, I think the third time I did the breathing, I got it to my shoulders. And as it passed that area around here yeah I can feel that I've got an injury there and I really do have an injury there and I can that putting that much more energy through it I could feel it 
so I'm going to have to do some uh, some healing meditations, which means I need to rehydrate, which means a couple of days of water. Try and cleanse that negative energy out because any injury is going to cause negative energy to develop in your aura and in just your bodily energy in general. And if I don't clear that out, that path is going to be blocked. It's like a dam being blocked. Okay, if I could describe what I'm visualizing or what's being visualized to me from that area in my back, it's like my muscles are over clenched, like there's a like a just a perpetual Charlie horse there. So I really just need the muscles to relax so that energy can pass just pass. Maybe my spine's a little twisted Oh, I hope you're all experiencing what I'm experiencing, other than the, the 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 minor crisis going on back there. Other than that, what's going on up here and in here, yeah, I hope you're experiencing that. But the trick is, I should be experiencing something in all my chakras, not just three of them. There we go. I get carried away sometimes because this one feels the best. The non the the, the greatest non-physical pleasure chakra is this one. It feels really really good. I can just I can feel the energy. I can see the temptation to run amok with this. Shenanigans. That's all that's going through my mind. Shenanigans. <laughs> I won't, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Kundalini. The Coiled Serpent. That energy. And I made reference to the Bible earlier, and they said, "Well, and someone must have must have had well, what reference to Kundalini energy is there in the Bible?" Well, like I said, it, most of the references to Kundalini energy uh, involve Moses, like when Moses was confronting Pharaoh, and they say he threw his staff on the ground and it turned into a serpent. That is a metaphor. Ground is the base. He put his staff in the base chakra and rose his kundalini and turned his staff the staff picture in your mind now a caduceus he rose his kundalini 
to the pineal and it gave him power and he did better with than the two priests the other reference is the parting of the red sea and making it across the red sea now if you were to look at a person's back or just see a person's body as it concerns just the blood vessels you're parting the red sea and you have to get there before the ruling house does because you're not trying to use that so now remember passionate energy isn't just sexual energy that 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 drive to conquer also comes from there so he had to get across the red sea <laughs> there's several other other references but this isn't bible study so go to the library <laughs> we'll get into it we will get into it later because this stuff is really interesting and it's not taught properly so when people eat read people eat see I was gonna say it properly when people eat that particular food they become poisoned because it was designed to be poisonous the trouble with that is the people that are in charge forgot and now are poisoned also and peddle that poison to others if it were taught properly we'd all be labeled pagans and wiccans <laughs> no joke but we'll get into that at a later date anyway we are getting on past the 30 minute mark I hope you have enjoyed this episode I enjoyed doing it I mean it feels great now <laughs> <coughs> I hope you learned something I hope I taught you something and I hope that even if you didn't learn anything I hope that you just stopped by and hearing me speak just helped to reinforce already long-held beliefs techniques what have you I hope I was at all helpful to you <laughs> ah, but if you did enjoy this video please click the like button you can favorite it if you want and leave comments down below or leave a video response that would be awesome it's supposed to be a discussion but if you would like to keep coming back and getting more information or you just like the sound of my voice then go ahead and subscribe but until next time you hang in there <laughs>